Brian Broaddus has first down here in some developing Cowboys news. Thank you very much, General. I kind of asked some, not kind of, I asked folks about Neville Gallimore and what his availability would be for this week. Kind of? You kind of did or I you know, did, did? I did. I you said, did. I, I corrected myself. I don't know why I used the word kind of. Well, you kind of. He's trying to keep it low key. How no, plugged in you are. I know I what know. you're doing. Yeah, but you're gonna. What you do is you're gonna call out. I know what you're gonna do. I'm gonna read this and you're gonna call me out for it. Like, okay. You're gonna say something like, Let's "My see. gosh, what are you doing, man? Let's see. You're not protecting anybody over there." I'll else. be the judge of that. No, you will. I know what's gonna happen. You don't I'm, know what's gonna happen. Yeah, Seeing the future is impossible or I very did. hard. I, well, Neville Gallimore. He okay. His availability. He only practiced one time last week. And that was really a very limited practice for him. Okay. So what's going to happen is he's going to practice. Uh, he's going to practice tomorrow and Thursday, and see how it goes. And if he doesn't have any issues, then I would expect Neville Gallimore to play. Now I've been told there's a lot of moving parts going on here too on the defensive line because Randy will be back, and Tristan Hill will be back from suspension. So Ooh, roster, roster, moves. roster moves are going to have to be done. So that's kind of where they're at right now with Gallimore. But he's going to have to be able to practice Wednesday and Thursday. If it all goes well, then you'll have availability for Sunday against the football team. But also, this was mentioned that there's going to be have to be some roster moves. Oh, poor Justin Hamilton with and Azura uh, Kamara. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that all just plays. pulled up the roster real quick and just... Calling my shots here. You calling your shots, Heather? Yeah. I was Hamilton's told, been helpful. Yeah. Hamilton has actually been pretty helpful there. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, – I also asked somebody, too, about what was going on. Would they cut a rookie? Would they make room with Bohana? Man, I don't know if they'd want to do that. Right. That's why I think of, Hamilton. Yeah, I think mm. that, that's going to be somebody that – if was, Hamilton was on their practice squad to start the year, too. He was. Maybe, maybe – but then again, we're at the end of the season, maybe a bad team saying, huh, this is a guy we could use for 2022. He was playing pretty well, or he had some good snaps for you. So maybe the film is... I think they still got two kickers on the roster. I think we only have one. Do I think we? put the other one on practice squad. Okay, because he's listed and on he's, their and roster they, and on they, the website. Is he really? Yeah. Liram is listed on the roster. I, he was on there. He was on the practice squad, and then they thought they released him. Unless they've recently added him back, they I mean, may not. They just may not yeah. update it all the time. But he's listed on the real, roster. Roster. Real quick, if I too, I also asked somebody about. They kind of told me to assume that Steele will be back at right tackle. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Mm. So we'll see. All righty. Jerry okay. said they're both the same, so they're going to play a bunch. We're going to rotate well, our right tackle. My guy, my guy, my guy was telling me that you know he says just assume that that guy's going to be back at right tackle. Insider reports there from our insider Brian Broaddus, former Cowboy scout. Yeah. You're on your home with the Cowboys. Yeah. That's why you tune in right there. Yeah. I, it's one of my favorite things is when you're really trying to unlock your run game is to put your best run blocker on the bench. Yeah. And your best runner on the bench. Yeah. For, for, yeah, put in the hurt running back and the worst run blocker, and that's your that's how you really unlock that thing. Mm-hmm. Can't wait. You know, it's it's it, you got to remind yourself, it's a good football team. They have a shot, but please stop shooting yourself in the foot, guys. Uh, here's Jeff with second down. Second down, Bill Belichick was really fired up about his regular season win after a fourth down stop. Onto the bye. Got him the win against Buffalo. At least that's what the words say. I didn't see that fourth down stop because I refused to watch the second half of that stupid football game. That emotion penalty kind of helped him. His uh, quarterback attempted just three passes. Mac Jones threw three passes in this game. Defense allowed just 10 points and 230 yards. And the Patriots took down the Bills, 14 to 10. He was asked on WEEI if anything from Monday night's game could help the Pats prepare for the rematch with the Bills in week 16. Belichick said, yes, we could use our passing game. All the pass plays that we have, they haven't seen. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have to throw the ball at all. <laughs> Such a stupid, stupid game in the cold and the wind. And I love that Brian's guy, Josh Allen, is out there pretending that that's not a thing 
and goes, what was he, 15 of 30? It was tough. Which I got to tell you, that's pretty good for what that weather was. I thought he was going to play better in those conditions. Buffalo though. unleashed him couple, with 40 he, mile an hour wind. He had a couple of he had a couple of passes that I think the the ball he was trying to drive it through the wind and the ball got blown wide. Yeah, a couple of times. Like you try and throw it at the guy and then it gets blown. Wide. And both teams were way more conservative, going right to left yeah. when the wind was in their face. Yeah. But when it was behind them, they were willing to throw the ball. Chuck it. I just want to reinforce well, that if you watched that last night, put a roof on that well, thing. Let's play better football. Let me give you this real quick. The Patriots, they were going against the wind in the first quarter. And they and then when the quarter ended, they had an eight to nothing lead. So that's that's Oh, because then Damian Harris, they just broke yeah, they, they broke one big play. Sixty five yard run. And they were going the wrong way. So they couldn't kick the extra point because the ball would have blown all the way back to them. So they had to go for two. Ran a toss sweep. <laughs> it's, so, it's so weird that we ever decided to keep Same playing play. football into the winter. <laughs> you know? Yes, we did bad season picking. Were they just trying to fit into a sports schedule that already existed? Like, what there, were we doing? There used, yeah, to, be a time, there used to be a time where, like, football was over at January 1. I mean, NFL. Seriously, go, be over November go back, one. go yeah, back, and, one. go yeah. back and look at all the ice bowl games and championships Stupid that were games. played a day after Christmas. Yeah, football used to be over January first. <laughs> well, yeah, I, if if it was up to me, I, I think I'd start the season around uh, right when kids get out of school. You know, they got all the all the time in the world. They could stay up late watching Monday night football, Sunday night football. You know, and the thing wraps up uh, shortly after yeah. Halloween. If if we want to get down to it, I mean, that was. I, I, I do sympathize and agree in, uh, in with what Jeff says. It's it's not ideal. And Choppy's I think a lot of people too. tuned out last night. Dak Prescott is the Cowboys finalist for the NFL Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. That is third down here for you. He has obviously been an amazing human being. Uh, uh, he's involved in multiple charitable foundations, whether it's his foundation for the fight, faith, and finish or uh, mental health and and cancer there's three at least yeah plus an incredible leader plus coming back uh from the injury in an incredible way being an incredible uh example for his team i i don't know that there's a finer man in all of sport let alone the nfl but i, I know things you know it's th things get involved here but i i wouldn't be surprised if dak wins this at all you know sometimes there's a story where a guy has this incredible tale and it gets it goes viral and all of a sudden that guy's going to win in the film man of the year but from my seat i don't i don't think anybody um uh, you know is, is a better man than dak uh, you have uh miles jack representing the jags all right watch miles jack work on his get off in a hotel lobby in indianapolis did a good job the we combine was it 2016 yep Yep. You have DJ Moore with the Panthers. That's a hell of a player right He's there. Really Maryland is really good. Jimmy Graham with the Bears. Jimmy. Still alive. Still, oh. They still throw him a jump ball a week. Yeah. Oh, don't tell Jason Garrett this. Tyran Matthew is the Walter Payton nominee for the Chiefs. JGC decided that Tyron was such a bad guy because he smoked some fake weed in college that he wanted nothing to do with him in the NFL draft. <laughs> What the hell is my, my phone loves to phone? think I'm talking to it now. What, what did it do? Siri, something Siri. about Tyron Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's answering all the questions. Yes. Uh, you got uh, uh, Jonathan Allen in there for the football team. So uh, oh. best of luck to to Dak. Cameron Hayward with the Steelers. That's Jeez. a huge honor, by the way. It is. Seriously, yeah. that is that is. I think they've only had three. Like uh, Jason Witten, Roger Staubach, Troy Aikman. I think were the three that have won the uh, NFL Man of the Year.